What's up guys, Derek, moreplaceworldaids.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about why you shouldn't feel awkward going out alone. So when you are first getting into pickup, PUA, whatever the fuck you wanna call it, um, I don't know what it goes by nowadays, to be honest. I guess it's uh, it's kind of a joke when you refer to it as PUA. It's hard to take it seriously. At the end of the day, though, it is meeting women and building a high-quality dating life. How do you not feel awkward going out alone? You're not always going to have friends who want to go out, especially if you're doing this very, very often. Sometimes it's even more time efficient for you to go out on your own so you don't have to, you know figure out rides you don't have to figure out who's uh the fucking designated driver you don't have to be the dd for your friends um ideally you would have friends to go out with because it's a lot more fun but there are going to be the nights where not everyone is available where some people aren't available and you end up like you're trying to put in fucking work and you need to go out by yourself and this is what i recommend doing when you first start i don't recommend well first off once you get good at this, you can integrate this into your life rather than set aside giant blocks of time for approaching or, uh, you know, like sarging or whatever the fuck it goes by now. But um, you still have to go through that uh, throw yourself in the fire phase where you do absurd amounts of exposure therapy to get to the point where you can even integrate this into your life in an efficient way where you can at the drop of a hat go approach chicks that you see during your errands, during your everyday activities without having to dedicate the blocks of time to, you know, going and approaching fucking 20 plus girls in a night or whatever it is you're doing. So you're in that phase still. Let's just say you're still a newbie and you're going out very, very often, which you should be. You should be going out several nights a week as well as several days a week if you are, as well as doing online dating, as well as going on your dates that you have through all those avenues. If you're doing this hardcore, you should be spending like almost every fucking day on it, to be honest. So when you go out alone, how do you not feel awkward about it? Well, you have to, it's all a mindset at the end of the day. So when you're out, think about when you look around the bar, what's your perception of people? You'll see guys talking to chicks. What's your first assumption when you see that? If you're a fucking newbie, your first assumption is going to be, oh, that, that's his girlfriend. Oh, he know. oh, they must know each other. You see a guy talking to another guy, oh, they must be buddies. Oh, you see this this group talking to this group, oh, they must have come here together. Oftentimes, not often, and sometimes, it's not the case at all. But no one is the wiser, and everyone just assumes if you're talking to somebody, unless there's some visual cue that you're being like, you're not getting along, or you're annoying, or some shit. Typically, they assume you're you know them, and you're with them. And this is what you leverage to not feel awkward going out alone, because at the end of the day, no one knows what the fuck you're doing or who you know. Unless you're a wallflower, that's the only way they can tell. So if you're standing there in one spot on your phone doing nothing, not walking around, not communicating to people, sitting on your, your bar stool, just sitting there, you know, looking around, looking for like the best set to open because you can't just like go in the fire and fucking figure it out. That's when people know you're alone. If you're constantly in motion and constantly communicating with people, Everyone just thinks you have tons of friends and you're some sick fucking guy. So I don't know why this is so hard to comprehend, but it's just ve very basic social perception. Like when you're out and about, like I said, when you see, like I, I would even sometimes see like guys, you know, you're talking to the bartender um, for an extended period of time. You would think if the chick is smiling, you would think, oh, they must know each other rather than, oh, he might just be talking to her or, you know, oh, this, uh, this girl's dancing with this guy. And they just made out like, oh, they must have, uh, you know, they must be like girlfriend, boyfriend or something. It, it couldn't possibly be that this guy just met her like five minutes ago and just like hit it off and is fucking killing it. And you're standing here in the fucking corner looking like a dumbass playing, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know, playing some stupid game on your phone trying to occupy yourself while people are actually like getting to know each other like consider the fact that people go to bars to communicate with each other the whole point is to interact with new people like guys guys that have girlfriends people with girlfriends are rarely out at bars like i guess they are when they go in groups and whatnot but it's like if you're locked down you're not really going to a bar with your chick just to like stand around and like you're everyone's there to meet people this is a social setting you're expected to be talking to people Going up to a chick you've never met is expected behavior. So you standing in the corner is the awkward thing. Not you going into the fire and potentially making a fool out of yourself. In fact, while you are making a fool out of yourself, talking to a chick, there's some other guy looking at you from across the thing 
And if it's not blatantly obvious you're getting blown out, he's going to be thinking, oh, look at that guy. He's fucking sick. He's talking to that chick. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's so easy to leverage the night game environment to a point that makes you look like a fucking boss to every other guy in the fucking room, as well as all the chicks. It gets to a point where it's almost too easy, even when you're getting rejected a shit ton. One of the strategies that I talked about briefly before actually was how to build social circles, even with chicks you get rejected by. And this was kind of a... A bit of a controversial topic, but it works out very well, and I recommend you check that out. It was about how to build social circles even when you have no friends. And that was a good video, I feel like. This one is more like how to leverage rejections in a nighttime scenario. So oftentimes, you're going to get rejected. More often than not, that's just the name of the game, numbers game. When you get rejected, you can either you know move on to the next one, which is a totally fine outcome as well, or you can like leverage your environment and make things fun for yourself because you're there by yourself. And what you do is you can build up a foundation, like you can build a social circle in your environment from nothing. One of the things I used to do, which worked exceptionally well, which I recommend you try out, is next time you're out in the middle of the night at uh, some club or some bar or whatever, and you approach a chick, which you should be doing, she rejects you, she has a boyfriend, whatever it is, instead of uh, just you know moving on to the next one, what you do is, Tell her she's going to be your wingman for the night. Chicks are usually, especially if they're there just with their girlfriends and they have a boyfriend or whatever, they're bored. They want some shit to do. Everyone's just a wallflower in their group of friends. No one's doing anything exciting. And like, you, even though you're in a club with the most visual stimulation you could possibly have, laser beams fucking flying around, um, sober chicks or like chicks that aren't hammered, they're, they're not like highly stimulated in their mind like most people are just kind of standing around bored to be honest like a lot of people are boring wallflowers just like you were afraid of coming across as they might be they're going to have their groups of girls there with them though because if they're hot they're not going to be there by themselves but they're likely just standing around with their girlfriend hashing it up kind of just you know fucking around waiting for guys to talk to them or whatever and a lot of girls are actually up for this and it makes it kind of fun for them because they can you know do something interesting with their time rather than stand against a wall and um, wait for the next douche to come up to them and get their fucking ego stroked a bit more. So you would tell this chick she's going to be your wingman for the night and she's going to help you uh, meet someone. So she's honestly often going to be up for this. Even if she's not, it doesn't matter. You've already blown out the set and you're rejected anyway. So what do you lose? And oftentimes I'd be like, okay, like let's go around. And like I would like point out some chick and then I would take the chick who just rejected me would go up to the new chick that I wanted to meet. I would go up with this chick who rejected me, walk up with her to a new chick I want to approach and have her be like, oh, have you met uh, my friend Derek? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's Derek. The, your name is blah, blah, blah. Meet each other, blah, blah, blah. And then leaves you to the chick with a, a massive trampoline of social proof, making that chick think that this high value, high hot chick who she has no idea you just got rejected by is actually like a good friend of yours and she's just like hooking you up with this new chick. And then all of a sudden you're starting off the interaction like three steps ahead from when you would have otherwise if you just came in cold with nothing going for you. You're just another guy who came up to her or you're the guy who has you know, a cool social circle with hot fucking chicks in it who came up and trampolined you into the situation where this chick thinks, oh, this is a high value guy who has high value friends and he's here with high value people. And in reality, you're just a fucking loner who's doing surgery, <laughs> who's trying to learn this shit. And it's fine though, but this is like the kind of stuff you can do to leverage, like you could pull that off in a matter of five minutes. You could have gone from not knowing any of those girls to going up to the first one, getting rejected and blown out, taking her to wingman you to the second chick, introducing you, making you seem super high value, social proofing you, and then you're talking to the new chick and you've introduced yourself all in the matter of like 300 seconds. Like it sounds ridiculous, but that is the kind of stuff that happens like that if you're on it and you actually know how to manipulate your environment and kind of take advantage of the situation. And this is the kind of stuff I would think of on the fly. And I thought I was, this probably comes across in my video too, but I like, I thought I was way too smart for figuring this shit out. I was like, why is everyone not doing this? This is fucking sick. But I would like, it was like a game to me, to be honest. And it would be like, how can I like 
psychologically like mind fuck the next set into thinking building me up to some like artificially perceived amount of value with need needing to do less work than i would have otherwise and it's not like you did anything deceiving really to begin with and in fact the first chick who introduced you who initially rejected you after seeing you with the new chick often actually get some jealousy built up towards watching you excel with the new chick. It's just a really weird, interesting dynamic. And then you can go talk to the other chick after and all of a sudden she's not so fucking taken after all. And she's, you know, suddenly a bit more open to talking to you. And even if she's not, I'm not saying to go after chicks with boyfriends, by the way, I'm just saying some of them will reject you and say they have boyfriends when they don't, or they may just reject you flat out. The first chick, seeing that you have the capability to talk to this other new hot chick is suddenly getting the wheels turning in her brain that you're a high value guy, even though she just fucking rejected you. And she's probably gonna be down to talk to you later that night. And then you have a set you can eject out into and go hash it up with her later because you can't, you know, you're not gonna go if you get rejected by the second one or you just wanna like leave the interaction because you don't wanna be sitting there talking to her for an hour straight or whatever. You know, hypothetically, let's just say you wanted to leave the set. Ideally, you would actually have it go somewhere and not leave the set, but anyways. If you did and you want to branch off, go get a drink or whatever, instead of going back to the wall that you were going to wallflower on before and look like an idiot and a creepy idiot, especially after you've finished talking to this chick, if she sees you go up to this wall and stand there and do nothing, she's going to be like, ooh, this creepy loner guy. Or if you go eject and talk it to this other girl who you met already, who you've kind of like, you're like friends with now, which you may actually become friends with, to be honest. Um, you can go hash it up with them and you can like build up this, like you could repeat this like five times theoretically in a matter of, you know, 20 plus minutes and build up like this weird, like social circle click of like a massive fucking network of complicated, like hot girl, like niches in the fucking club. And none of them know that you don't actually know any of them technically. And now you actually do technically know them because you've actually met them and introduced yourself and had a decent conversation with them. But just like that, the perception of everyone seeing you communicating with all these chicks, everyone, th all of a sudden you went in there as a complete loner who hasn't done like anything. And now in a matter of 20 minutes, you're the most connected guy in the club who knows every single odd chick that's worth talking to. And then all the guys pick up on it and think you're the shit. And then you can talk to the dudes and you can hash it up with dudes because they're more than willing to accept you into their social circles to talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about because you're a high value guy who has all this massive game when in reality you just know how to leverage social interactions. So that is a strategy I recommend you deploy and why you shouldn't feel awkward going out alone. The fact is, is no one has fucking x-ray vision. Not that x-ray vision would tell you this, but just like no one can tell who you're there with, who you're not there with, who you know, who you don't know. It's so loud you can barely even understand what people are saying in clubs to begin with. A lot of it is just like, you know, um, not verbal game, but like uh, physical, like how you, your body language. I don't know why I couldn't think of that in my fucking head. But you can misconstrue so much shit in the club to the point where like no one has a clue of anything. Like I, even when you walk in, you look around, you have no idea who knows who, who knows what, what is... What up from down, fucking left from right. Like when I was a bouncer downtown, people used to think I was part of NHL teams just because I was standing there when NHL teams were in our bar because I had like a dress shirt on and dress pants. They would think I'm like an NHL player just because I'm standing there and I'm like tall and white, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, like it just goes to show just like be, just standing there can get your own, get like first impressions can change just based on like no one knows anything, dude. Like you can make any... That's the beauty of Night Game in my opinion is you can literally like create a world for yourself in a matter of 30 minutes, less than that, 10 minutes. You can create like a whole fucking universe of opportunity and no one knows fucking anything except you and you're the mastermind of the situation. So that is my um, favorite part of Night Game and is uh, really cool to see uh, work out when you have a guy who is confident in what he's doing. He goes in knowing absolutely no one <laughs> and he leaves knowing every single hot chick and having a shit ton of high quality numbers and then leaving with the one that he wants to get with the most. So that is what I recommend you do when you go out alone. Stop looking at it like, I don't have any of my buddies there. Like, this is fucking weird. Like, oh, like everyone's gonna know. Everyone's gonna know I'm here alone. It's so obvious. No one knows shit, dude. Just keep in motion, talk to people. Never be not talking to somebody for more than fucking 20 to 30 seconds. Just get around. Um, 
and move and fucking communicate with people. That's all it is. That's what you're there for to begin with. So get to it and uh, good luck because it is, um, it's fun though. So don't be so scared. And the beauty of it is even if you completely destroy everything to the point where you're fucking chucked out of the club because people think you're too creepy. I don't know, dude. Like, like there's been situations where as bouncers, we'd have to like drag a dude out because he was too fucking weird, according to some chick. And automatically we'd just be like, oh, fuck this dude. And we'd throw him out. But I'm not going to say that's going to happen to you. But even if that did happen to you, every night is a fresh slate. Like at the end of the day, when you go to a new club, when you go to a new place, every night is a fresh, fresh slate, new faces, new fucking game. It's like literally dying in a video game and then hitting reset and starting again. It's always a, a fresh slate and it's just, there's no comparing to night game in terms of like that scenario. So it's really, it's honestly like one of the, I feel like the most rewarding and funnest ways to capitalize in terms of you feel the most accomplished when you do night game in my opinion like day game i guess is something no one really does i guess so actually you can probably i guess you feel pretty accomplished from that too online game is really not satisfying but you can get a lot of results with it high volume with low effort and if you're results oriented then and you have good and by all means leverage that and really like lean into it but to find out if you like are really good at talking to girls like night game is uh it's the funnest in my opinion of all of them that you can like leverage the psychological aspect the most so um thank you guys for watching please like subscribe check out my blog moreplatesmoredates.com follow me on instagram at moreplates underscore more dates facebook snapchat bit shoot twitter tiktok apple Podcasts, wherever i am if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below um my trt clinic if you are seeking testosterone replacement therapy hormone optimization in any capacity. We have a lot of different uh, therapies available and medications. I recommend you check them out. You can see all the medications offered in the available medication section. We even have a wish list that you can add to your cart for stuff you're interested in to give our patient care coordinators a better idea of exactly what you're looking for. And from there, you can schedule a consult for free with our pa patient care coordinators who then contact you. Um, go through your blood work A to Z and then connect you with our doctors over Skype, FaceTime, Zoom. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. So it's super convenient. And from there, after your conversation with the doctor, you can get prescribed whatever may be warranted for your own uh, medical needs and anything else I'm associated with. Gorilla Mind, nootropics, I should mention for sure. Those are what helped me cram 16 hour work days into every single day somehow. Um, I leveraged this throughout my university years and moving into my working years now um to really kind of just stay locked in stay creative stay focused keep my attention on point for more hours than i would otherwise be able to in a daily basis so i recommend checking those out if you are somebody who is a student you know somebody in uh the corporate world entrepreneur editor whatever it is anything that requires high levels of focus for long spans of time these really excel for and they are the best nootropic formulas on the market for it bar none uh, my pre-workout formula is Gorilla Mode, um, as well as uh, Gorilla Mode Nitric, which is the stimulant-free pre-workout. Just compare the labels of yours to mine, and you'll see pretty transparently why I uh, am so you know, adamant about telling you guys to switch, because <laughs> the labels speak for themselves. So if you use pre-workout, I recommend you give it a shot. Anything else I'm associated with, video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.